Hi thrifters, Dan the Thrift Man here with another table talk about one of the items I like to collect and purchase at the thrift stores and discount stores that I frequent. Um, as you know, I like the Disney Studios a lot in their animation, but I also like the Fleischer Studios. Many of you may not be familiar with the Fleischer Studios, but you may be familiar with their cartoon characters. The most famous being Betty Boop. Betty was the first female cartoon star ever created. She was also a very sexy cartoon character. She was designed by Max and Dave Fleischer as a 20s era flapper and often danced and sang in her cartoons. Max and Dave were brothers and were probably Walt Disney's biggest competitor in the animation industry. The Fleischers were innovators in the early days of animation. One of their inventions was the rotoscope machine. The rotoscope allowed animators to trace the movements of dancing or some com complex movement that had been filmed and then transfer them to the cartoon characters, giving them very lifelike movements. Many other animation studios have used this invention, including Disney. The other invention they created was the rotograph. The rotograph was a background that was built on a turntable and rotated and filmed with the animation cells filmed in front of it. It would give the animation an eye-popping, three-dimensional quality. The, Di the, the Disney Studios invented and used an invention called the multi-plane camera to achieve uh, a similar three-dimensional quality in their cartoons. And I'll put up uh, on the screen a, a sample, uh, probably from Popeye, which will show you the, uh, how this uh, rotoscope background actually looked and what uh, kind of quality that it gave the cartoons. And as you can see here, the uh, character of Popeye and Sweet Pea are uh, in front, and these are animation cells, so it's on clear plastic. And behind it, are, is the 3D background. And the background is being turned on like a small uh, Lazy Susan type uh, mechanism. And uh, here again, uh, you can see where the backgrounds really look lifelike. And so uh, this really gave uh, a really unique quality to their cartoons. Um, the other invention that was created was the addition of sound to cartoons. Many believe Walt Disney was the first to add sound to cartoons in the classic Disney Mickey Mouse cartoon, Steamboat Willie. Others argue that the Fleischers were the first with this innovation with a cartoon called My Old Kentucky Home and was released two years before Steamboat Willie. Regardless of who was the first, both studios were innovators and made a, uh, the cartoon a real art form. They pushed their animators to higher and higher standards, leaving most of the other animation studios behind. The Silly Symphonies cartoons by Disney and the Max Fleischer cartoon classics pushed the animation technology to new levels. And as you can see on the screen, here's two examples of the uh, Silly Symphonies and the uh, uh, cartoon classics uh, that the Flasher Studios did. And you can see they're very, very uh, well done, very colorful, uh, really smooth, nice animation. Uh, they just really uh, push the animation technology and the animation to a new uh, level.
I believe the Disney one is Flowers and Trees, and the other one's All's Fair at the Fair. Now, if you want a really good uh, set of Betty Boop cartoons, uh, look for a set of VHS tapes when you're out, out thrifting. This eight tape set has most of the Betty Boop cartoons and are excellent transfers from film to VHS. The set is un this set is unopened except for one tape and was a good buy for just $10. Good luck finding these. I've only found one of these in the years I've been thrifting. This set was a, has a few of the Betty Boop cartoons missing, but most of them are included. Keep an eye out for this set uh, in the future at, the, at, at your thrift stores. Betty's early cartoons for, were for more for adults than for kids, as you can see in the cartoon that is playing now, and probably not politically correct by today's standards. Her short skirts and adult situations were common in many of her cartoons. Many of the cartoons created back then used racial stereotypes and would be very controversial if shown on TV today. Later on, the Fleischers had to be had to tone down Betty to adhere to the Hayes Code, which limited what could be shown on a movie screen. So instead, Betty became the nice girl next door, but it did make her less popular at the theaters. And here's an example of her when she was kind of toned down, being very motherly to this child. And uh, so, um, but they really had to make her more acceptable uh, to the general audiences uh, at this time. Betty's first screen appearance was in the film Dizzy Dishes, where she was more of a, like a human dog uh, hybrid character. Uh, as time went on, uh, she became the Betty we know today, all woman, and no dog nose and no floppy ears. Betty had some co-stars in her cartoons uh, as well. Um, one of the uh, characters that were in the Betty Boop cartoons was named Grampy. Now Grampy was a, a, an enthusiastic character who invented uh, machines that would solve any problem that needed solving. And I'll put up a picture of Grampy here in a moment. And that's, of course, Betty, when she looked more like a dog uh, with the dog nose and the ears on. There's Grampy. Uh, and Grampy was always coming up with ideas. He was a really lovable character and uh, he and, that, and that's uh, Bimbo and Bimbo was uh, in a few of the Betty Boop films uh, and he was a character in his own right and had many films where he appeared by himself. So now we're going on to another VHS tape with Betty Boop uh, uh, in the Fleischer cartoons. It's called Cartoon Madness. Uh, the Fantastic Fleischer cartoons, and it's hosted uh, by the movie critic and animation fan, uh, Leonard Malton. Uh, he, is, uh, he does some uh, uh, storytelling about the studio before each cartoon and uh, talks about the studio and the different characters. Uh, I found this tape at the thrift store for about a buck and transferred it to the DVD copy to make sure if, if the tape breaks, I have a copy. Um, the other characters on the cover are Coco the Clown, Popeye, Raggedy Ann and Andy, and uh, I think that's all that's on the, on the front of these. But uh, it has a nice collection, and uh, there, there's Popeye and there's Coco the Clown on the screen there. And Coco the Clown was actually Fleischer's first uh, cartoon character. He came first, and then Bimbo, and then Betty the Boop, and then Popeye came along. 
and they were really well animated, really nice. Now this other set has a DVD set of cartoons that are also you might be able to find at the thrift store. This set has a number of Betty cartoons, but the quality of the transfers are not good, real good because they are probably taken from lesser quality prints and are probably public domain cartoons, meaning they're no longer copyrighted. Uh, this means that anyone can take public domain films and sell them on DVD or VHS. Shown on the back are most of the Fleischer characters uh, who probably appeared on these uh, DVDs. Uh, and there's Coco, there's Pudgy, Betty's dog, um, and then there's a uh, couple other characters, uh, Bimbo, and I'm not sh quite sure who that character is, but uh, he's uh, somewhere on, on this DVD set. So keep an eye out uh, for this set, and, and uh, it'll be a decent set to have. Another popular Fleischer character was Popeye. Popeye was a comic strip character which the Fleischer Studios acquired uh, from a long-running uh, uh, comic strip and they created this animated series. A few years ago they released a DVD box set of the early Popeye cartoons. This is the most comprehensive set of early Popeye co cartoons ever released. Later that year, they released two more, and they're right here. And they are uh, also mostly black and white early Popeye cartoons. Uh, a lot of them are wartime cartoons. Some of these war cartoons uh, may include some offensive stereotypes that were common in many of the studios releasing cartoons during the war. The, um, Paramount and Famous uh, Studios made the color Popeyes, which are fun, but don't have the whimsical nature of the Max Fleischer Popeyes. Definitely look for these at the thrift store, and who knows, maybe at a discount store. Um, these may show up anywhere, but these are uh, good for your collection, or or for resale if you uh, are not a big Popeye fan or people that would love to get their hands on these. Um, another place you can pick up vintage cartoons and Flesher Studio cartoons is in the $1 bins at various discount stores. This example has about 10 cartoons from various studios including a Betty Boop cartoon. I think Walmart used to sell these but they I think they've stopped a year or two ago. Dollar Tree and Dollar General may be a good place to find these. Uh, I took the DVD out of this one uh, and put it in with a bunch of other uh, cartoon DVDs that I had, but I kept the, the box. Now, now the best set of Bet Betty Boop cartoons are these two box sets of Betty Boop cartoons on laser discs. These were very expensive when they were sold new, which in 1996 were sold for about $100 for each set. I think I got these through a friend for about $30 each. These are very high quality and almost comprehensive, comprehensive set of Betty cartoons. Finding these will be difficult. I've never found any at the thrift stores, so eBay or Amazon may be your best bet, but plan to pay a premium for these since uh, they're hard to find. Possibly uh, more than the cost when they, they'll probably be more than the cost that they were when they were new. Uh, I also, uh, to make sure I uh, had these uh, from this point on, I also transferred these uh, onto DVD uh, in case my laser disc player would ever stop working and so I created these two sets here um, which have a chronological order of the uh, uh, Betty Boop cartoons and then just a regular set of uh, DVDs uh, with just the uh, cartoons in uh, random 
random order. So uh, this particular set, they're just in random order. And so I have these on DVD now, so in case my laser disc ever bites the dust, I'll have these to play on my DVD player. Um, so if you're a classic animation fan, definitely keep a lookout for any of these video formats with the Fleischer Studio cartoons. Hopefully someone will put out a Blu-ray or 4K version of the Fleischer cartoons. These films are film history and deserve to be restored and preserved on the best video formats available. It is expensive to pre preserve films, so they will have to see enough of a demand for them to spend that kind of money on them. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe. Give me uh, my video a big thumbs up and hit the notification bell so you know when my videos are posted to YouTube. Also leave me a comment and leave me some uh, feedback. Oh yeah, and also I forgot about these. These are uh, another series of Fleischer cartoons uh, that uh, of Superman. Actually the very first Superman cartoons that were ever created. And uh, these are amazing. The animation is, is amazing. Uh, the stories are, are really good, uh, taken right out of the comic strips, a lot of them. And uh, these are really, you need to see these to, to really appreciate them. The, the cover art on the uh, DVD uh, and VHSs just don't do them justice. So definitely keep your eye out for these.